Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos involving ecology. This video will discuss, in detail, themes pertaining to behavioral ecology. An example of a behavior is shown clearly in the photo involving leopards fighting for territory. Many classifications of behavior, such as agonistic behaviors shown in this picture, will be described throughout this video. Behavior can be defined as the way in which an organism acts in response to a particular situation or stimulus. If a dog owner says shake and holds out his hand, for example, a dog might lift up its paw and shake it. There are two major classifications of ecological behavior, innate behaviors and learned behaviors. Some behaviors are hardwired into organisms from their birth, as exhibited on the right. Puppies feeding on their mother would be an example of an innate behavior, something that organisms don't need to be taught. Other behaviors are learned or gained through experience in the world. The next few slides will outline some particular types of learned behaviors. During an organism's life, there are some developmental stages in which specific behaviors are learned most readily. During what's referred to as critical period, organisms can be particularly impressionable. Imprinting is one example of a learned behavior acquired during an animal's critical period. There are many examples of filial imprinting, where offspring learn behaviors from their parents, as evidenced with birds. An example is shown in the picture of the right, where ducklings are following a dog as they would typically do with their mother. In a classic study, an ecologist even managed to have ducklings, during their critical period, imprint on and follow a boot wherever it went. When an organism is exposed to a stimulus, they usually have some hardwired response. If a fish were placed in an aquarium and a child tapped on the glass, it might initially, innately, hide behind something. Over an extended period of time, however, if that little girl continued to harass the poor fish, the fish might eventually begin to ignore her in a process called habituation. Conditioning is yet another example of a learned behavior. With conditioning, organisms eventually associate some stimulus with another stimulus that could be related or even completely unrelated. In classical conditioning, scientists set up an experiment to show how these relationships between unrelated stimuli are formed. Dogs naturally salivate when they see food. They do not, however, normally salivate if a tuning fork is struck and a particular sound is made. If, over an extended period of time, a tuning fork is struck every time that food is introduced to the dog, the dog will eventually salivate when it hears the tuning fork, even if there's no food present. The picture to the right exhibits this experimental setup as well as the results. Many movement behaviors of plants and microorganisms are innate behaviors, again, hardwired into an organism from birth. The two major types of movement are taxis and kinesis. Taxis is the directional movement towards or away from some particular stimulus. The prefix chemo refers to chemicals, photo refers to light, and geo refers to the earth. Geotaxis, therefore, would be the movement towards the earth. Phototaxis would be the movement towards light. Chemotaxis is the movement towards some chemical. Phototaxis is exhibited in the plants near the window on the top of this slide. The plant is moving towards the very well-lit window. Kinesis is also a type of movement behavior. The primary difference is that it is not directional. The bacterium on the bottom of this slide may increase or decrease how quickly it moves if there is some chemical present, for example. If there is a lot of food near the bacterium, it might make sense for the bacterium to slow down and enjoy the opportunity to eat lots of food, while if there is little food present, the bacterium may speed up to hopefully encounter a food source quicker. There are a tremendous number of behaviors that animals possess. A good many behaviors involve mating. These behaviors differ in every species, but those of fruit flies, a commonly studied organism in biology classrooms, are exhibited on this slide. Organisms employ many different strategies for survival in the world, even involving their mating systems. Monogamous relationships, as those that would be traditional, but certainly not always the case, with humans, are quite rare in the animal kingdom, but would involve one committed male and one committed female. Polygamy is the general term to describe more than two individuals in committed relationships. Polygyny and polyandry are two types of polygamy that differ in who has the more committed partners, whether they're male or female.
Polygyny is shown in the picture of the unusual wedding cake topper to the right, as the male has multiple female committed partners. Finally, promiscuity is a mating system characterized by many casual, that is, not committed, encounters. As in all themes of biology and ecology, there's a trade-off with the different mating systems. Monogamy may allow for humans to provide more parental care to offspring, while promiscuity may increase the diversity among offspring and bees. There might be more mixing of genes from different individuals. There are many aggressive behaviors that animals can exhibit towards one another. Agonistic behaviors are social interactions within one species that often involve displays or threats in an attempt to secure resources such as food, maintain control over territories, and often, as relating to the content on the last two slides, mating. While these behaviors may appear very violent, they seldom result in severe injury or death, as that would reduce the fitness of both the winner and the loser. The deer in this picture display hierarchical agonistic behaviors. Other examples could involve birds ruffling their feathers to scare off competitors, or gorillas making threatening calls and pounding their chests. Altruism describes an act, a behavior, that puts oneself at risk in an attempt to protect others. A mother stepping in front of a car to protect her child, or a soldier jumping on a grenade to protect his fellow soldiers, would be examples that relate to humans. There are many other examples that would apply to non-human animals as well. The purpose of this behavior, if you want to think in those terms, is to protect one's genes through one's relatives. While some individuals sacrifice their own well-being for the group, there are some strategies that involve groups of organisms that improve the survivability of all individuals, including oneself. Herding buffalo or schooling fish, flocking birds, are all examples that exhibit group behaviors. By forming groups for certain activities, organisms can improve their efficiency, improve their chances of finding a mate, or the, reduce the chance of being killed by predators. The picture on the right shows a school of fish that are grouping up in order to reduce the chance of dying due to predation by these whales. That is the end of this video, summarizing behavioral ecology. If you're interested in learning about any other levels of ecology or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.